Hi Stampers! Welcome to my free class, Coffee in a Card. I'm so excited to show you 11 various card layouts today. I'm Vicki Sewell, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Chattanooga, Tennessee. You can follow me on Facebook at Stampin' Chat 30 or email me at stampinchat30 at gmail.com. Our winner from last week's video drawing is Robin Carson. Last week I offered a sample package of designer paper from Celebration, but I'm actually going to give her a choice. I have an extra Blair, Berry Blessing stamp set, so Robin, you can choose which one you want, the stamp set or the designer paper sampler. Just let me know now or later by typing a comment below. Today I'd like to share some tips about how to cut and create with your pattern paper. I've been using Stamping Up products for four years now, and one of the things I love the most are the beautiful designer series papers. But for a long time I was afraid to cut them up, and then I was very unsure about how to use them, because you don't want to waste a single piece, right? So I want to show a few ideas I've learned along the way. I'm going to use... I'm working with pattern paper and a stamp set you can get free with a qualifying purchase from the Celebration Catalog called Berry Blessings. The paper and stamps coordinate really well with a bundle from the January to June mini catalog called Sweet Strawberry, which includes a stamp set and a punch. I'm sure you'll see this pretty strawberry bundle featured in a future coffee and a card session soon. The tool I'm going to be using today in today's demonstration is Stampin' Up's Paper Trimmer. It has a lot of nice features, including an extendable ruler along the side, and rulers along the bottom, here along the bottom, and along the side there. It has a light gray scoring blade right here for creating nice folds and a dark gray cutting blade that's easily replaceable when it gets dull. Now, if you're an experienced stamper, it'd be a good time to go refresh your coffee and come back in a minute because I'm going to explain to my new stampers how to cut card bases. As you look at the eight and a half by 11 cardstock, you want to think about the center measurements of the cardstock. The center of this edge, the short edge, is four and a fourth, and the center of the long edge is five and a half. So you want to score and then cut, remembering to use these center measurements. For example, if you score at four and a fourth in the center here, and that's using the gray blade. And then you turn to the long side and you cut using the dark gray blade. You'll get a card base that opens like this. Here's the score line. And it opens like this. Or you can turn it and it will open like that. When it's this way, we call it portrait. When it's this way, we call it landscape. Alternately, if you score on the long side, if you score on the long side at five and a half, and then you turn and cut on the short side at four and a fourth, you'll get a card that opens like this. And you can also use it as a portrait or a landscape card just by turning it. Either way, if you remember to use the center measurements, you're going to get two nice card bases from one piece of cardstock. All right, that's your card base. Now let's look at the pretty patterned papers. While you're looking through your new package, you need to first determine if there's any paper that coordinates with a Stampin' Up! punch or dies and remove it from your cardstock, well, from your cutting stack. For example, this strawberry page coordinates with 
this strawberry builder punch. The light sometimes glare, so I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a leaf, the top of the strawberry, a flower, and a strawberry. You can see I've already cut around some pieces and images and punched them out because I'm going to use them on a card today. I won't cut this paper up on my trimmer. Second, as you look at your package, you need to determine if there's any directional papers. If you're also a seamstress, you'll know what I'm talking about from working with your fabric designs. A good example is this strawberry paper. It's very directional. You don't want those strawberries floating up instead of hanging down. So I'm going to demonstrate cutting with this directional paper today because that will be the hardest for you to do. Usually you get two sheets of the same design in a paper pack, so you can cut one sheet for portrait cards and the other sheet for landscape cards. Now I use a basic formula for cutting all my paper. I cut it four inches wide, so I'm gonna line it up on the trimmer, and five and a fourth inches long because that's the size of a standard card layer. Later in this video, I'm going to show you a variety of card layouts you can use with just this size paper. Now the first cuts I'm going to make are at four inches. So I'm lined it up over here at the mark, four mark. I'm making sure that it's straight all the way down. And I'm going to use my gray cutter and just cut straight down. So there's one strip. I'm going to repeat that two more times. Because mathematically this pat is, well, I'm going to repeat it one more time. Because this pattern paper is 12 by 12, and mathematically I can get three even cuts. Then I'm going to turn these cuts and cut each one at five and a fourth. Because that's the standard size of a first card layer. So I'm going to line it up right here. There's five and, the four, five and a fourth mark. And I'm going to cut... And I'm going to cut one more time. When you finish, you'll have three little scraps that are four by one and a fourth, one and a half. Be sure to save these because I'm going to show you some beautiful cards you can make with those in next week's Coffee and a Card. All right, I'm going to finish cutting these pieces. Saving that little piece for next week. These big pieces are now ready for portrait card bases. Remember, if the design goes in all directions, you can just go ahead and cut it all without looking at the pattern and the pieces could be used equally for portrait and landscape cards. But this is a directional design. So now let's look at the second piece. This time I'm gonna turn it so the strawberries are sideways. And I'm going to, again, make three cuts at the four-inch mark. I'll have three pieces. All right, now I have three pieces. I'm going to turn them and, again, cut them at five and a fourth. Saving the little piece and putting it off to the side.
And the last one. Now you can see these cards will be great for landscape cards. The strawberries will be going in the right direction for a landscape type card. Now, I store all these pieces. I go ahead and cut up pretty much the whole package, and I store these pieces in a Stampin' Up! case. They used to carry double wide, and they don't anymore, but you can do a Google search to find them. When I'm ready to create, I just pull one out, and it's ready to go. It's a little hard to open. There we go. I didn't want them to fly everywhere, but I just put these right in here cut and they're ready to go when I'm ready to design so here's the fun part I'm going to show you 11 variations of layouts with measurements and a card example for each one then I'll fully demonstrate how to make one card design with you oh one thing I forgot to show you on the back of the designer paper there's always a part that tells right here what colors are in the designer series paper. I cut that out to a smaller size and I include it in the back of my stamp case so that when I'm ready to create I have the colors that coordinate with this paper right here in an easy to refer to list. I don't have to go looking through the catalog to find it. All right the fun part, the cards. Here's the first card. I'm going to start with the easiest layout. Let me get the paper trimmer out of the way. Here's the easiest layout. This is the one that's cut five and a fourth by four inches, the whole solid piece. I cut a piece of card, white cardstock the same size in half and then I just turned it to stamp the center section the focal interest and then I added a little piece of this dotted tool ribbon it's so much fun to use this ribbon it's so light and airy it's just easy to use um, this cards on white cardstock it's very basic basic white and um, I used uh, Garden Green ink and Pacific Point ink for the blueberries. Now, here's the secret for any layer. If you want to add a layer to a paper, like here I have two layers. Here I only have one layer of cardstock. But here I have a light purple layer and a dark purple layer. All you have to do is cut a fourth of an inch off this side and a fourth of an inch off this side. And if you want to go even smaller than that, then you cut another fourth of an inch off this side and another fourth of an inch off that side. So that's the secret to making layers. Just remember that general rule for every layer you want to add, decrease each side of your top layer by one quarter inch. And I'll post pictures of these in my interest group, Stampin' Chat Chicks. If you're interested in joining that group, just email me or send me a message. Here's another uh, stepped up card. Same pattern, just stepped up a little bit. And here's how I stepped it up. I used, um, first of all, I used Pacific Point cardstock instead of the white cardstock. I used the Stitch So Sweetly dies from the So Sentimental Bundle. If you buy a bundle, you can save 10%. This is one of my favorite, favorite sets. I think it's so versatile, and I love the dies. You get the rectangle dies, and then you get these uh, label dies. So it's great for a beginner to have this set. I stamped off the berries. And the sentiment is from 
the Valentine Keepsake stamp set, which is in the mini catalog on page 16. And then I just added a few rhinestones. I still have the little bow that I had in the first card. So that's just a hint about how you can step up a card. Here's the third card that's really stamped up. Stepped up. I put it on Granny Apple Green cardstock base. Um, I cut out two of those uh, half layers and I kind of angled one. Uh, I added some linen thread and a little linen bow and some linen ribbon. So that's just a way to step up a card. And uh, these, this is glued down flat or use seal. And these are popped up on dimensionals. And that adds a little more layer to your card. The next layout, you just take this piece of designer series paper, the whole piece, and you cut it at two and a half inches. So that leaves you a two and a half inch piece and a one and one half inch piece. You can add, if you don't like the seam, you can add a piece of cardstock. I actually ran this cardstock through an embossing folder. It almost looks like ribbon. Or if you have ribbon, uh, you can add a piece of ribbon there. This is a um, Label Me Lovely punch. And I just punched out another one in uh, the poppy color and cut it in half and put it a little bit behind the original layer. And that just pops it up a little bit on your card. So I call that the alternate. The other way to do this card is to flip. Here I just flip the sides. Instead of the big piece being on the left, I put the big piece on the right. And um, again, you don't have to always use the designer series paper. The designer series paper has a pretty side on the back always, and you could use that pretty side on the back but um, sometimes if you want to vary it or, or make more cards with your paper package, you can uh, use cardstock. This is cardstock with a linen uh, ribbon, linen twine. And I use the tailored tag punch here. The stamp, uh, the thank you is out of the strawberry set. And uh, just added a little, uh, embellishment there. Pink and green are two of my favorite color combinations. So this is another layout using those same pieces that I cut out, the same size. You just um, cut at two inches cut off a section at two inches, that leaves you with a three and one fourth. And you can either put it at the bottom, you can put the two inch strip at the bottom, or you can put the two inch strip at the top. Either way will work. Uh, again, this time, and you can see I covered it um, with the, I covered the seam with ribbon. And um, I used that, uh, I told you I cut out some strawberries with the punch from this paper. All I did was punch out these leaves and these strawberries and these little flowers with that punch I showed you earlier. This is a layering oval, uh, stitched oval, and I stamped the greeting from the strawberry set. I did use an embossing folder on the back. This is Coastal Weave. Um, it's retired, and Stampin' Up! also had another uh, basket weave embossing folder that's kind of fun to use um, to give that berry basket effect. Um, I have seen this set used with the new embossing folder called, uh, I think it's Pattern Texture, uh, but that is on, on back order and I haven't got mine in yet, so I just used an older one. So there, there's a way, another 
design for you. Here's a fun design. Um, it's, it's a diagonal. I don't know if you've seen these. But the way you cut the paper, the way you cut the pattern paper is um, you just put it on your trimmer at two inches. Like for instance, if you had this paper, you would put it on your trimmer at two inches. Kind of like this. And um, take a pencil. Let's see if I have my pencil over here. There we go. And just make a little mark right here, just a little pencil mark like that. Then just turn it all the way around and again, put it at two inches and make a little mark with your pencil. Then you're gonna line up the pencil marks on your trimmer. So here's, I don't know, it's a little hard to see. There's one pencil mark and there's my other pencil mark at the top. So I'm going to put it on my trimmer like that, and then I'm just going to cut down. And then you get the angled paper like that. So that's what I've used on this design. And you'll probably have to cut two papers so that you can turn it over. If you want to flip it, you'll probably have to cut two of these. But then you can get two cards, and you'll get one layout where the big well, one design is at the top, and then you can use the other piece at the bottom like this. So on this card, I use this beautiful paper. Um, I added a greeting on a strip of basic white, um, some embellishments, some poppy ribbon. And uh, one of the new trends is to put torn paper. You may not notice it, and I could have put just a little, I could have scooted up under there a little bit more so less of it would show. But if you kind of look, that's one of the ways that they're adding layers to a card now is just put a strip of torn paper underneath your greeting. That's one of the new trends. The next card layout. is a diagonal cut and I do want to show you how to cut this because it's also a little tricky it's hard to start your trimmer on the corners like that so when you're cutting the diagonal let me get a piece of paper here for you out of my box When you're cutting on the diagonal, you're going to line your paper up so one corner is right on that cutting line and the other corner is right on this cutting line. And if you try to start cutting right on that point, it's probably going to jam. So what you want to do is bring your cutter over to about the middle of the paper and cut down. Then you can bring your cutter back to the middle of the paper and cut up. And that will cut nicely and won't jam up at the corners. So that's how I cut the, car, the designer paper for this card. You can see underneath there's your basic diagonal. I just This is that cute strawberry paper and I just flipped it over for the seeds. Um, and I added the um, so sentimental layer there. Uh, I showed you that stamp set just a little bit earlier. Um, both of these came from the Stitch So Sweetly dies, and uh, just layered them up in a little linen bow and a few little poppy embellishments. Um, that stamp, this greeting comes from the uh, strawberry set, but you'll notice the uh, font in both the strawberry set and the blueberry blessings goes together. 
It's a matching font. So you can mix and match those sentiments anytime. Now this is a variation. The next card is a variation of that same cut. This is kind of an alternate. Um, instead of putting those two together, you can pull them out a little bit and leave just a little gap there if you want to for decoration. Or you can cut off, again, a fourth of an inch across this side and another fourth of an inch or maybe even a half of an inch across here and reduce it half of an inch here and pull these apart and then you'll have a nice space for a sentiment. So that's what I did there. Of course, when you go to choose your sentiment, you need to try to find one that's a long uh, sentiment. So that's fun to try. And here is a landscape variation. It's much like um, the other two, one and a half inch and two and a half inch. Uh, it's similar to the one that goes like this, but I've just turned it so that it's landscape. And you, again, you can put the, uh, you can swap the patterns. You can have the narrow part at the top or you can have the narrow part at the bottom. It's up to you. Uh, you can cover the seam with ribbon. You can cover the seam with um, cardstock, or you can just leave the seam. If it doesn't, uh, if it goes together well, then you don't need to cover up the seam at all. Garden green because there's garden green in this paper, and uh, use the Pacific Point. So that's another card layout for you. All right, the last card layout I have for you is just to cut the layers in half. So on this card. To, uh, you don't always have to use the other part of the reverse side of the designer paper or another piece of designer paper. On this card, I used a, a subtle uh, embossing folder and then I added the uh, designer paper there. Now, um, here's some alternates. Remember, you're going to have you're going to cut it in half, and you'll have two pieces. So, you know you can reverse the two. Use use cardstock or use designer paper, and you can reverse them. You can turn those pieces and use this. You can turn. If you cut those pieces in half one more time, you'll end up with a four rectangle layout. This layer. So that's the card I'm going to make with you today. Uh, I I cut the sentiment out with um, the tasteful touches dies. Tasteful label dies. And I use this die right here. So let me give me a minute to shift gears and get the pieces. I used the Blackberry Bliss cardstock. in half. So I'm going to, and I'm going to use the designer series paper, both sides of it. I'm going to uh, lay it out like this. I think I like that. Yeah. So Top. 
place that fairly evenly. There. I want this piece on the bottom. Be careful that you put your seal on the correct side. That's, that can be a challenge sometimes. And it helps me if I just turn it upside down. Now if I don't, I want to make sure I get it even at the bottom and the top. Okay, it's not quite going as well as I'd like. Sometimes if you catch it in time, you can peel it off and reposition. I see that needs to come up a little bit. So give me just a minute to do that. There we go. Oh, that's stuck to the paper. All right. A little more. And I have a little strip of the garden green paper to cover up the seam there. Uh, it's so narrow, I don't know if I can use seal on it. I'll use just a little bit of the Tombow glue. I do have a pattern for cutting your cardstock into usable pieces, and I'll probably do a video on that one day. And you end up with a little strip like this. I don't call it waste. I either use it on my cards, even though it's tiny, I use it on my cards, or I use it, um, of course we want to get it straight. You can use your paper here to help you get this straight with the lines. Um, or I use it when I'm trying to use my punches. All right, so we've got that part made. I cut out a circle out of the stitch circles, and because this is not going to show, I went ahead and cut another circle out that I use on another project, but I didn't want to waste my cardstock, so I cut out an extra circle, and this will cover it up. It won't show. Um, this is what I'm going to stamp with. I'm going to use the um, Blackberry ink. I think I'll start with the leaves first. They're larger. I'm going to start with the largest image first. So I'm using Garden Green ink. And this is also a, a two-step image. You'll see the outline of the leaves and then you'll see the part that colors it in. And the same with the berries, and the same with the raspberries, the blueberries and the raspberries. So, let me turn it the way I want it. I'm gonna stamp that. And I'm gonna put it up here at the top. Turn it a little bit. All right. Then I'm going to come back with the leaf image. I'm going to stamp that off because I don't want it quite so dark. And then it's a little hard to do this on, <clears throat> on screen because I can't get my head in the picture there. But I'm going to try to turn it and match it up the best that I can and stamp. There we go. Pretty good. <clears throat> um, next, I'm going to come back and stamp the berries. Yeah, 
and um, oh yeah there we go there's the and let's see we put the really small berries at the bottom the little small circle small circle at the bottom it's kind of a blob it's hard it might be a little hard to tell but that's what you want to do you want to stamp one on this side stamp one over here like this all right then I'm going to come back and find turn it nope let's see is it that way yep I believe it's that way and I'm going to stamp off so it's not quite so dark. And this just kind of line those up. Again, it's an artistic impression. It doesn't have to be exact. And if I don't like that white space, I can come fill it back in with a Blackberry Bliss marker or a blender pen. Just touch it up a little bit. All right, now we're ready for the stem. And I'm just going to stamp that stem on there. Now, I, oh, wrong color. So fortunately, I have my chamois close by. Stampin' Up! has a Stampin' Chamois. And that just cleans that ink off there right away. It doesn't uh, get all over the place. Um, I happen to cut that one up into four, so I don't like the big. It comes in a big piece, and I don't really like the big piece. I cut it into four. What I was meant to do was stamp this and then just wipe some of the ink off the stem because I don't need the stem to be as long as it is. So I'm just going to... Put that at the top of the berry like that. Stamp another stem. Wipe off the part that I don't want. And stamp another little berry right there. There we go. Pretty good. All right. So we're ready to start attaching this. A little circle of glue right here. And put that there. The glue is nice because it allows you just a second or two to slide the image around if you don't quite get it centered. And then I'm going to put Stampin' Dimensionals on the back. And I like to put one in the center just to give it a little support. Pull those off. Now I stamped the label, the sentiment from uh, the Berry Blessings. It says, wishing you the very best. And again, I cut it out using the uh, this die from the labels. I'm going to pop it up with dimensionals also. There we go. Now, I love, there's some um, 
Blackberry Bliss ribbon, and I love this Blackberry Bliss ribbon. I'm going to try to tie a bow for you. I uh, work with children a lot, and I always taught them to use the bunny ear method. So I'm going to use the bunny ear method to tie a bow. That's the quickest and easiest that I know of. And you can kind of uh, play with it and straighten it out, straighten out the ears. Pull it tight. Just play with it a little bit. Okay, and you do it the way you like it. We'll trim off the tags. And we'll get a glue dot. Just like that, and add that right at the edge there. Look at one more one that way. And um, on the first card, I used some iridescent uh, dots. Oh, you can also this this take your pick tool also has some sticky on the end, and it's usually strong enough to actually pick up a dot. So I'm not going to add it on the paper up here. I think the paper's plenty busy, but I might just add one. Whoop, I lost it. Don't know where it went. Oh, on my finger, of course. So I'll just add one little dot there. Just to give it a little bling. Maybe a dot down here on the... Sentiment. And... Maybe one more over here. All right, there we go. We have a finished card. Here is the first card where I used the cardstock, and the second card where I used uh, the designer series paper. I'll post pictures of all these templates and sample cards in my interest group, Stampin' Chat Chicks. If you'd like to join that group to get more paper crafting ideas, just message me or email me at uh, stampinchat30 at gmail.com. My February host code is right here. Uh, celebration goes on until February 28th. Uh, this week, if you like and share my video, I'll put your name in a drawing for whichever prize Robin did not pick. Be sure to comment that you've shared right below this video. Otherwise, I have no way of knowing who you are. All the products I've used are available from my online store. You can just click the blue Shop Now button above, and it will automatically take you to my store. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be yours. Thank you for joining me for Coffee and a Card today. Be sure to ink it up and send a blessing to someone today. Bye!